Good morning, everyone. Um, so yeah, this is the last episode, the finale for the terror infamy. Um, the last episode is called Into the Afterlife. And I have to admit, after the last two episodes, maybe three, I hadn't been very impressed. Uh, I just sort of, I felt like it was, it was scattered and it was going all over the place. In, in the last episode, kind of did, but not so much. It was much more cohesive, but I didn't think I was going to say that the opening scene of this episode, I bawled my brains out. I'm tearing up right now. Holy crap. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go right in with the spoilers, because um, I'm figuring you're watching this um, after watching it yourself, uh, and I know people are watching these, um, but the the opening scene is George Takai's character, um, which right now is, is not, I guess Yamamoto. Um, is in a like a deserted road like just this big opening road on a flat landscape and someone with an umbrella dressed in black is walking towards them <clears throat> and it's very surreal and the person walks up and he realizes it's a childhood friend that was left in japan and now we all know from the last episode we're in 1945. We know what's coming up. We all know what's coming up. And they sit and they talk. You know, he, he, he's, he's thrilled to find his friend. And, and they talk. And he asks, what happened to you? What became of you? And he gives him his whole life story and everything about his family with his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchild. And they all live in Hiroshima. I'm tearing up. <laughs> and when he says that, because if I remember right, at the beginning of the conversation, they say something about this is the afterlife. This is the perfect afterlife. And it pans a little bit to the left. And you see this man's family behind him, all of them. And the last child, I'm assuming the great-grandchild, pulls away from her mother and the whole side of her face is burnt to a crisp. And you realize, oh my God, it's that day. And you realize all these people who are in camps may have had relatives in Nagasaki or Hiroshima and how it's going to affect them and of course when he sees well, Yamamoto sees the girl he wakes up you know and he, he wakes up in the skid row place that they're all living in and there's fireworks going off there's cheering going on outside and him and Amy go and walk outside and it's all these I'll say it white people celebrating the fact that they just bombed Hiroshima. And it's... It's an amazing... I mean, I'm just... I'm kind of wishing that the whole series had been like that, that had really pulled you in, like it did in those first two episodes, and you just kind of realized the horror of what and that's the, the basis of the whole show is what I was kind of hoping it would go in that root of that that horror that knowledge of the things that happened during the war you know and, and they didn't um, they, they went with the, the ghost story um, <clears throat> but you get that contrast of, of the Japanese Americans just being very solemn because most of them have relatives They've just spent four years of their lives, maybe five, in internment camps. And they're, they're finding out they may have lost relatives. And it's just, it's 
Ugh, hell of a contrast. Um, and it's incredibly sad, you know. And there's a talk between him and Amy that they, they exchange information and you find out a lot of stuff. And then it goes to the opening sequence and stuff. And we, we cut into where we left off last week with Luz Yukio. Um, rolling down the street with the baby. Gets picked up by a family. Um, Chester and the parents are out trying to find them. Um, and a lot of stuff happens there where Chester is trying to figure out how to take care of the issue. Um, you know, he's still thinking about killing himself, so then she can have actually him as a baby out of the baby photo. And uh, I think it was Luz finds a photo of Yukio, and you get a, a cutscene of with some really good CGI for uh, oh, what's her name? Aki, Aki, Akito? Oh God, I can't remember her name. Yukio's sister, uh, Chester's um, mom, and. It's a flashback to when the photo was taken at their house with the cherry blossom trees and everything. And she's pregnant with Chester and um, I forgot his brother's name. Holy crap. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so that was a really good scene and kind of impactful because you sort of see the stuff going on inside of Chester's mom's head. That she knows what she's done. That she's starting a situation that's not going to be that good. Um, and it's just, it's a game of tag at that point because, you know, they end up back at the house. They're trying to find Luz. They, they hop into a truck and they go to find her, Luz, and they find Luz roaming down the street without the baby. And then in the search, they find the truck, or not the truck, the car with the family that picked her up, and the two people are dead. And <clears throat> all this crap's going back and forth. And it, it, it's a lot of just, it, and this, again, it's where the pr previous episodes, it still goes into that weird, you know, confusing mess. And it does lead them to a graveyard. It's a Japanese graveyard where Yukio has dug a grave where she plans to die in and bring the baby with her. Um, <clears throat> and Chester's dad, Henry, brings um, sutras that stop evil from possessing you. And he goes through this whole process of making sure, you know, of making sure he's protected and shots are fired and crap happens. Um, there's a bag with a whole bunch of sutras in it. And if I remember right, he shoots Yukio and then starts to write the sutras on her. And then she attacks him, rips the sutra off of him, and then possesses him. He starts shooting at Chester, and Chester gets hit. And it, it, it just it falls apart, sadly. And Henry dies. But the problem is, is when Yukio goes to fall into the grave, the sutras have fallen in there and have landed on her and the baby. So she can't leave. Um, so she crawls back out. And by that point, her sister shows up, which is Chester's mom. And I'm just, I'm just sitting here going, how do you... Because, I mean, his mother shows up, and then uh, Abdullah shows up, and then everybody sort of shows up at that point. And Henry had ripped up the baby photo of Chester, so they don't, they don't have that. But Luz shows that, well, I have this photo of her. And Chester realizes we're not going to beat her. She'll always be there. She'll always be hunting for her Taizo, her baby. She's rage-infested. She wants her baby. She wants what she lost. 
She wants her babies back. And he basically goes at her with empathy. I mean, he's got the sutras on him. The sutras are on the baby. The sutras are on everybody. So if she can't get into any of them, she is beat to hell because Chester's mom basically tackled her and just started trying to stab her to death. Of course, she's already dead, so that's not going to work. And Chester's like, stop, it's not going to work. She, this is gonna, there's no way. We cannot stop her. And Lou shows him the photo of her before she came to America, and it dawns on him, if we can do the ceremony and both of us go back, you can have your perfect world. You can have both of us. And you can have your perfect world of the cherry blossoms and all that stuff. And... They go there. And again, I wish the whole series had been like this. This is a beautiful moment. And it's just beautiful. She's at peace. He, he's fixed everything. Which, again, this doesn't relate back to the, the, the first season of the Terror, the first series, um, is what I'm going to call it. Is, this is, like, completely different. I mean, I expected this just not end happily at all, like the Terror did, uh, the first season of Terror. So, it was just, that was kind of like a thud in the face, because I thought everything was going to... And everybody's going to die. And instead, it's like, oh, they get a happy ending? What the hell? Um, and then you end up with this kind of a... kind of like a dream sequence, but I also think it's a moment in the afterlife, what, like what George Takai's character had at the beginning, where he gets to interact with his dad. Ooh, I'm breaking up again, crap. Whew. And they have this really beautiful moment together. And then it comes out of that to the funeral. And he names his son Henry. And it just, in a way, it pisses me off because this is a, there's like so many beautiful emotional scenes in this episode just like there was in the second episode if you guys remember what I was like in that second episode and I get kind of angry because the rest of the season wasn't like this it didn't hit you in the heart it didn't make you feel a terror it didn't make you feel anything you just kind of went okay yeah what's going on and in this one it's like poof, right in the face and you're just like oh my god but so they have the funeral and they just do a fade to black, and then you get five years later, 1950. So five years have passed. <coughs> and you get to... <coughs> Ooh, sorry. On a street, you're outside of a building, and it says... Nak Nakamura? I think that was your last name? <laughs> and Sons Photography. And he's taking photographs of all the families and all the people who served during the war that were in the camp. So all these people we've gotten attached to. And he sits down with Luz and they got Henry and two little babies. And I don't know if they were adopted. I get in a feeling because a little bit later when they get together as a family for the o Oban, Oban Festival. You get a, it's kind of mentioned that they adopt two kids. So I was like, oh, okay. Um... And they take all these photos, and then they go to the Oban Festival, um, and they get together, and they, they're talking, and you're kind of getting, like, the stories everybody. <laughs> and there's a hilarious scene, which I came out of my tears, and was cackling like an idiot, because Luz comes to George Takai's character, Yamamoto, 
and gives him some Japanese treats. And he asks, did you make them yourself? She goes, oh, of course I did. And he goes, oh, my. And I'm just like, oh, my God, George. <laughs> you had to get an oh, my in there, didn't you? You just had to. Um, and then they did the Obi-Wan Festival with the, the lanterns and remembering all of those people, our ancestors. And it's, it's quite beautiful. And if I remember right, George Takai character says he's now living. Everybody has kind of scattered to the winds. Um, there's people out in the Midwest, there's people uh, in Hawaii, which is George Takai's character, and you kind of get at that closing. You find out what happened to everybody. Then they go to the credits, where they show the actors. And then a series of photographs of their families and where they were interred. Ooh, I'm losing it again. Crap. So you have all these photos of all of these actors and all these people who were in the series or worked on it and photos of their family. I'm assuming the people that had photos and where the, which camps they were interred at as families. And then the last one is shown is uh, George Takai. And you get to see baby George Takai. Wow, he looked different. Um... And it's kind of like, for me, and then, and then they have the little ending line of, you know, how many people were held and how it was a horrible thing, you know, that kind of stuff. And I just kind of went, well, that was a nice baseball bat to the face. And I'm like, but, yeah, it's it's a little known point of history. They don't teach it. They don't teach what we did during World War II to the Japanese Americans. So it's kind of like, okay, I get it. You know, I understand. But there's a lot of people out there that don't. So I can see. For me, it was kind of like, um, okay, I get it, but <clears throat> it was it was a nice in the face. Um, but I am wondering because she ended up in her uh, Yukio ended up in her cherry blossom afterlife. All I can think about now is Chester's brother is now stuck alone. Or that version of him is stuck alone in that other afterlife. Is he? I mean, well, I mean, we see him, and he's sitting there all by himself. And I'm like, so is he there trapped by himself for all eternity? I mean, what the hell? I mean, oh my god, that would be horrible. Um, I'm wondering about Chester. Is Chester still wanted by the military police? I mean, it's five years later, he's got his own business. Did it just kind of out of, you know, whatever? Um, I am kind of glad that I, I messed up, um, that I thought that the the testing of um, in Nevada of the bombs, um, <clears throat> or in Nevada, I don't remember where they tested it. Sue me. Um, but... I'm kind of glad they didn't go that route, and I'm kind of glad they didn't show it. Um, I'm wondering what's going to happen to Amy, um, and if there's going to be any long-lasting ramifications psychologically for her from her murdering um, the major. Um, she looks kind of like in the last scene. She's got a beret on. She. She looks like a beatnik, to be honest, and is on her own still, it seems. I mean, it doesn't seem like she has a family. But yeah, I'm just, I'm amazed how good this episode is. Even with a little bit of the, the stuff in the middle, it just, wow, right at the end, they just, baseball bat right in the feels and and it's definitely I mean I'm, I'm gonna say yeah watch the series just realize there are gonna be a couple of episodes where you're gonna be like what the hell I mean this is all over the place I mean we're at the Guadalcanal we're at the camps we're what okay 
now we're in New Mexico, and now we're here. What? I don't... Okay. But it's worth it, because it is part of our history. Not the, the psych... You know, the spiritual demons and stuff that... No. But the fact that we did this to people, and the ramifications of what happened, that these people came out of those camps, and all they were given was... I think it was $25 to restart their lives. And like I said, Chester's family, and those people from Terminal Island, when they went back, there was nothing. Their homes had been leveled. All their possessions, everything they left in their house, their boat, everything. 25 bucks is not going to buy back their lives. And that was horrific what we did. I mean, it's just, it, it pisses me, it still pisses me off. I mean, mind you, I, I still get pissed off over what we did to the Native Americans, the indigenous people, but I mean, it's just, these were American citizens. This was, I mean, this was, this was, what, 80 years ago? It, it isn't a distant past. There are people still like George Takai that experienced this. So it just, hmm. Mm. So, yeah, I would recommend it, definitely, um, to watch. Um, now, I have a question. I want to I wanna do a review, react, whatever, of the first season of The Terror. <clears throat> and I want to know what you guys think. Uh, should I do it as one big whole one, or should I do it like I did with this one, episode by episode? Because it's been a while since I watched it. It's been a year and a half. I haven't watched it since it aired. And... I wouldn't mind rewatching it and watching it and reacting episode by episode, like maybe doing two episodes a week, maybe three, and <clears throat> letting you guys know. I mean, I think it would be interesting. And it is, it is really good, and it is a fact of history. It is based in history. It is based on real events um, with a fictional twist, huh, kind of a supernatural fictional twist. Which could be attested to, you know, the lead poisoning and everything they suffered from. That it might not be a supernatural twist. It might just have been a pissed off bear, but we don't know. So let me know in the comments, because I know there's a bunch of people watching these. So if you are interested in hearing episode by episode my reactions to the first season of... of the two ships trying to find the Northwest Passage. If you want to hear my reactions episode by episode, let me know. Or if you want just a an extended over-review of the whole thing, which it's a lot of information and it's not going to be a quick video, let me know. Leave it in the comments. Um, I'm really heavily leaning to the episode by episode. Uh, just give me something to do, because there really isn't anything on TV right now. Other than American Horror Story. At least nothing that interests me. Uh, I do know Vikings is coming up, and I will do Vikings. Because I do know the history of a lot of that stuff. So that's going to be a lot of fun. <coughs> oh, sorry. I am really sorry about that. But yeah, um, Terra Infamy. Kind of a great beginning. Metacore, Metacore, middle, middle, kind of, meh, middle. Right up to the end, and then the finale just... Touchdown through the goalpost. And I think that's the most important thing. Is a damn good beginning, a damn good end, and that can sometimes save a show. And it kind of did. Because as of last week, I was kind of like, eh. You know, I, I wasn't going to recommend it, but it saved itself. And it really saved itself with George Takai's, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> so please leave a comment let me know how what I should do with um, the terror season one uh, please and hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell so you can see the next time I update and see if I do do it episode by episode see you guys next time right in a phone call haha <laughs> see ya